Hey there, welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm Shannon Rogers, your host. This is my shop update. In previous week, I talked about how to correct an error on this little case. And at the time, I talked about how the same technique could be used to add like a shelf to a case that had already been assembled. Well, I actually got quite a few questions about this and apparently I needed to clarify and, and demonstrate that a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a shelf to the center of this case and show you how it's done when the case has already been assembled. And like I said on the last video, but in case you haven't seen that one yet, this is not a practice that I would endorse. Ideally, you wanna cut your joinery before you assemble your carcass. But sometimes designs change. Sometimes we just have a brain fart and you need to come back and figure out how to do it later. Now, I'll just start by turning the whole case on its side and I need to locate where I wanna put the shelf. I'm just gonna put it kind of smack in the middle of it. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the shelf, so I'm gonna maximize the height of the openings here. Putting it right in the middle does that. Um, I could certainly grab a ruler and measure out, find the center and mark from there, but I'm actually gonna use a pair of dividers because the dividers are gonna add repeatability. Now the first thing you may look at is, well, I don't have dividers big enough to divide this case in two. And if I extend this out to its maximum length, best I can do is get to about two thirds. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be divided into two steps. We can divide it into four steps. So if I do one, two, three, and four, then I know that my second mark right here is the halfway point. And most importantly, I can flip the case over, starting again at the bottom, and do one, two, and now I've precisely located this little divot on both sides of this case. So we'll end up with a shelf that's square, in other words. So now I just need to square these lines across. I'm gonna use a knife because this is gonna end up being one of the walls of my dado. Now I'm gonna grab the stock that I'm using for my shelf and I want to drop my knife in the line, bump the shelf up against that. I bring my square on the other side just to give it something to square it up against. Holding that firmly, I can mark the other face. I'll just make a couple passes here, move the shelf out of the way, come back with my square because I can, I can get a better purchase this way. And knife that in a little bit deeper. I just want to flip it over and repeat this whole process on the other side. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't the shelf going to be slightly off center at this point? Because that little divot I made marks the center point of the case, right? And now I'm essentially marking in my lines so that the bottom of the shelf is the divot I made with the dividers. So yes, in this particular case, the shelf is going to be about three eighths of an inch higher than the center line. But I think you'll find if you look at a lot of cases, oftentimes the lower space is slightly bigger than the upper space. So I'm fine with that from a design perspective. If you're really adamant that it has to be dead center, then what you do is you just take the thickness of your board divide that in half and then step down from your, um, your little divot you made. You can actually set that dimension on another pair of dividers or the same pair of divider so that you can add that consistency and just step down, create another uh, a divot about, in this case, is a three quarter inch thick board. So I'm making another divot about three eighths of an inch down from the bottom. I'm not gonna bother with that because it's not necessary here. Now it's up to you how you want to proceed from here. Uh, a lot of folks will advocate coming in with the chisel and creating, call it what you will, knife wall, first class saw cut, whatever. Creates a little V groove here that allows your saw to kind of drop down in it and you get a little bit better purchase on that cut. And that's up to you. Uh, over the years, I found that uh, I kind of need that less and less and it just goes a little bit faster if I just skip it and just saw it on my line. It's entirely up to you. There is no doubt that that V groove will certainly help you when it comes to um, keeping your saw online. 
I need to set a depth of this, and I'm just going to use my gauge. If I just extend the gauge a little bit long, drop it on the floor of my rabbit, and drop the fence down, that sets my depth, and I'll use the knife line, or the gauge here, to create a knife line there, mainly because it severs the fibers and it will cause this to want to break out right at the rabbit floor. But most importantly, I need a good line on the front of my case to know the depth of it. And I'll go ahead and transfer that up to the top here as well. Now with my saw, drop it in the line. I'll saw until I hit my gauge mark on the front and then just check on the back. I'm usually a little bit shallow on the back. It's okay if you touch the wall of the rabbit because obviously no one's ever going to see that. But as a matter of practice, let's try to not saw into that rabbit. Once I get it to depth, I'm going to drop the saw in the kerf. And I like to just put my hand on the back of the saw and I try to wiggle the saw. And if it wiggles a little bit, my line is not perfectly flat. And usually there ends up being a little bit of a hump in the middle. So I angle the toe down and just kind of run the saw lightly back and forth. And it will remove any areas in the middle. And now the saw firmly registers and it tells me that I am to depth. I've got it where I want it. Now this wall here, I didn't do that knife wall, but you can see the knife line itself still want to grab the saw and kind of, for lack of a better term, suck in the saw. As I work my way back across the board, I'll move my thumb back and it's kind of like training wheels. It gives a little bit of a guide. Now the key here, my thumb is on the plate, but the curvature of my thumb keeps any flesh away from the tooth line. So even though I'm touching the saw plate with the point of my thumb here, my finger is nowhere near that tooth line. So I'm not going to cut myself by accident. And just using that little thumb technique, the training wheel, works great to get the kerf established. Now I'm square across the face and in my line. Now I just need to take it down to depth. Do that little trick to text the back, and it's nice and firm registered. It's not going anywhere. Flip the case over. And repeat this process. to make sure that you're sawing on the waist side of your line. So saw to the inside of your lines here so you're not accidentally widening the dado by the width of your saw kerf. And if that's a problem for you, make sure you put X's in your waist to remind you where you're sawing. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop a Morton cut right in the middle here. It may not be necessary but it certainly will make chiseling this out a little bit easier. I've got a three quarter inch chisel, but as expected, big box lumber is never quite exactly three quarters of an inch. So I've got to go down to my half inch chisel. And I would just want to chop it out. Now I'm starting specifically with a light cut here. I don't want to go right to my line. 
because as we saw last time with this case, you just don't know where the grain's going to go. And I'm going to chisel to, you know, a little bit from the end and flip the whole case around. and come back from the other side. And I've got a tool that I specifically use for dados like this. It's a crank-necked um, paring chisel. And it's specifically sharpened at a nice low angle, so it pairs really well, especially in soft grain. And I can come in and work very close to my final depth. I could actually take this dado all the way down to a finished depth if I wanted, just using this chisel. But I find just getting close allows me to come back with a router plane and really dial it in for not only a smooth finish, but a nice flat finish that's flat in reference to the inside wall of the case. Here's a fun little trick that I like to do specifically because I have wooden bench dogs on my bench. I'm gonna position this bench dog right at my gauge line. It marks the depth of my dado and position right behind the dado. And what it does is actually backs up the cut. So I can now plow across, and I've got that dog backing everything up. So I don't really have to worry about blowout. But again, that knife line really helps control that. As long as you're not taking super deep cuts with your router plane, you'll find that the, the light cut will just cause the fibers to shear off right at that knife line. This just kind of saves you from having to constantly flip the case around and worry about spelching. Of course, with this particular case, I could just turn the whole thing around and work from the front to the back. And that's probably the preferable thing to do here because the material's already been removed at the rabbit, so it's not going to blow out on you. But I wanted to just kind of show how that wooden bench dog trip helps. Because sometimes you need you have show sides on both faces. You need to be really certain that you've got a clean uh, exit to the data. If you ever end up with those kind of clingy fibers that you see on the sides of the dado like that, that's just areas where the saw cut didn't quite get all the way to the bottom. So what I'll do is actually angle the point of the router blade into the bottom of the dado. And it kind of undercuts that wall a little bit. And it frees any of those fibers kind of clinging to the side. I just want to repeat that process on the other side, but this time I'm going to be smart about it and I'm going to work from the front face to the back because that's where it's the important part, right? The show face stay nice and clean and I'm not going to get any blowout into the rabbit on the back side. I'm going to go ahead and set the depth stop on my router plane to where we just last left off. This setting is the bottom of the dado that I already cut up here. I'm only making about a quarter turn of the wheel on the depth adjuster with each pass. I can't overstate that the router plane is a light removal tool. It's not meant for hogging out material. It's not meant actually for forming joinery. It's meant for refining joinery. Because there's just there's no support on the blade as it hangs down like this. So if you try to do heavy cuts with it, you're gonna get tear out. You're gonna get all kinds of chatter 
from the blade. So take it easy. And now I'm at my depth. And you can see I can just work straight across this. And because at depth, I'm at the level of my rabbit here, there's no worry about blowing out. And there we go. Two dados formed into an existing case side. So now all I have to do is take my shelf piece and size it down to the exact length so that it perfectly fits in these dados. Right now I'm, what, like probably three quarters of an inch too long. And lest I repeat the issue that I had with this case before, I need to size it down, narrow the whole board down so it's the same width from the front of the case to the start of the rabbit. Right now, it's too wide. And this is the problem that I had before that caused me to have to remove material after the case is already assembled. So lesson learned there, let's not repeat that again. So with that in mind, let me grab panel gauge here and I'll set my gauge off the front of the case so that my pencil or knife, whatever you want to use, lines up with the back of the rabbit. So there's no measuring anything here, just size it right off your existing case. And let's choose, this is a good front edge, no knots on that, so we'll use that as our front. Lay in a line on both faces. I just need to remove this material from the edge. One of the things I always say is if you're not certain about the grain direction of a board, start planing. <laughs> See what happens. If you find that you're tearing out massively, then you're probably going the wrong way. Here's another great use for a scrub plane. have I guess about maybe an inch to three quarters of an inch to remove from this board. The shorter sole of the scrub plane kind of rides over the hills and valleys of the edge. I can move it laterally to kind of square the edge out. Paying attention to the topography of the board, getting it really close to my line, and there we go. Now I'll just grab my joiner plane. Flatten this out. There we go. Now, this board has the appropriate width, and I just need to get it to the right length. So again, keeping with the relative dimensioning idea, rather than trying to measure everything, I could certainly line this board up and, and just mark it right on the board, but I'm gonna use a pinch stick. These are fun, easy, shop-made tools. It's just two sticks that, I have pointed ends, and I ride them up until they come tight from dado to dado, and then I've got these little collars with thumb screws. They're just threaded in place. And now this dimension from this point to this point is exactly how long my board needs to be. So let me move the case out of the way right now. Grab my marking knife. And actually, I should check to make sure that I've got a square end. That one looks pretty square. But let's check this one and see how that is. That one's pretty square, but slightly less square 
than this edge. So certainly you could come in and shoot the edge first, but since it's going to be buried in the dado, this doesn't have to be perfectly clean. I think this might actually be the sawmill edge. So now I'm going to line up my pinch stick, flush at one end, and come down to the other end and just stick my knife in there. I'm going to use a square to line that up. Knife in my line. Now I just want to saw this to final length. I think I'll stay maybe just a hair away from that line. And again, same technique we use for the dado, just using my thumb, sliding it back. It's kind of the training wheels until that kerf is established and I just need to complete the cut. Now again, the edges of these boards don't have to be perfect, but certainly if you have a shooting board lying around, this is a great opportunity to use it. Let's check the fit. Okay, I'm a little bit long there, so I definitely stayed outside my line. All right, kind of fit now. That's how we do that. You can choose if you want to glue it up from here or I would probably just go ahead and drive nails through like I did with the rest of the case.